Are we on the brink of a cosmic revelation? As our understanding of the universe faces unprecedented challenges, we ask, what mysteries lie hidden in the vast expanse of space? Waiting to rewrite the rules of cosmology? Stay tuned until the end of this video for a special reveal that could change how we see the universe forever. Despite constructing our cosmological model using observations, theories, and mathematics to support these theories, there are indications that the universe is not entirely aligning with our understanding. You may be familiar with the cosmological crisis, which essentially emerged when various methods of determining the universe's age began yielding disparate results, a puzzle that remains unexplained by cosmologists. The situation has been exacerbated by recent images from the James Webb Telescope. The universe is currently expanding, causing distant galaxies to move farther away from us. When we attempt to determine the rate of this cosmic expansion, we have two main methods at our disposal. The first method involves calculating the expansion rate using data from the cosmic microwave background, which represents the light remaining from when the universe was just 380,000 years old. The outcome of this calculation yields one value. The second method relies on our knowledge of how bright distant supernovas are expected to be. By comparing their expected brightness to their observed brightness, we can estimate the expansion rate of the universe at the time of the supernova event. This approach, known as the standard candles method, provides another value for the expansion rate. These two different methods of calculating the expansion rate result in disparate values. The discrepancy between these results is referred to as the Hubble tension. This unresolved difference in measurements is at the heart of the cosmological crisis, perplexing scientists and challenging our understanding of the universe's behavior. There's a new crisis on the horizon, and it seems to be a distant relative of the cosmological crisis, one that we're not particularly fond of. Dedication to developing specific theories about the universe is now met with scrutiny. Such scrutiny is embraced, as it is through these challenges, that science advances and progresses. When we gaze up at the night sky, provided we're not in a light-polluted city or an area obstructing starlight, we see a multitude of stars. Among them, we can also spot the Andromeda Galaxy as a faint smudge amid the starry expanse. This is because our universe is teeming with stars and galaxies. However, the fundamental question is, just how much of the universe do they occupy? In simpler terms, how much matter is truly present in the cosmos? This seemingly straightforward question leads to anything but a simple answer. The crux of the matter lies in the fact that current cosmological observations are in disagreement when it comes to how matter is distributed in the universe today. This discrepancy has given rise to what's known as the SA tension a problematic cousin of the cosmological crisis that we would rather do without. The SA tension serves as a gauge for the uneven distribution or clustering of matter in the universe. To simplify, imagine the universe as an enormous puzzle, with its pieces being the matter scattered throughout space. Scientists aim to comprehend how this matter is spread out and how it congregates into clumps. There are two methods to measure this phenomenon. The first approach involves precise calculations using low redshift observations, such as weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon wherein the immense gravitational pull exerted by massive objects like black holes and galaxies functions adds cosmic magnifying glasses, warping and distorting the light from more distant objects that would otherwise remain invisible. This phenomenon provides unique insights into the expansive cosmos. Nonetheless, the SA value obtained through the second method, which relies on the standard model of cosmology and cosmic microwave background measurements, fails to coincide with the values acquired from low redshift observations. This misalignment lies at the heart of the confounding SA tension. So, where do we go from here? It's evident that there's a profound gap in our understanding, something that doesn't quite fit despite the multitude of theories, observations, and hypothetical entities supporting those theories. What could be the missing piece of the puzzle? In search of answers, astronomers have embarked on an extraordinary endeavor, conducting the largest ever cosmological simulations. To grasp the sheer magnitude of this undertaking, consider that these simulations demanded a staggering 50 million hours of computational time spread across the 30,000 processors housed within the Dracosmo 8 supercomputer at Durham University in the UK. This monumental project goes by the name Flamingo, a somewhat convoluted acronym standing for Full Hydrodynamic Large-Scale Structure Simulations with All Sky Mapping for the Interpretation of Next Generation Observations. What sets Flamingo apart from previous simulations? 
besides its immense size and high resolution, is its comprehensive approach. Unlike earlier cosmological simulations that primarily focused on modeling dark matter, which constitutes the majority of matter in the universe, Flamingo goes a step further. Although ordinary baryonic matter makes up just 1% of the universe's total mass, it can significantly influence the distribution of cosmic matter on small scales. For instance, the growth of galaxies can be hindered by galactic winds generated by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions. In contrast to past simulations that only considered dark matter, Flamingo takes into account and tracks ordinary matter as well. This is because, despite dark matter's dominance in gravity, the contribution of ordinary matter can no longer be overlooked. Although the Flamingo simulation achieved notable milestones, such as accurately reproducing the formation of galaxies, like the Milky Way and Andromeda, it encountered a limitation when it came to explaining the observed weak clustering of matter in the contemporary universe. In essence, it did not succeed in resolving the very issue it was designed to address, the SA tension. One might even go so far as to suggest that the Flamingo simulations hint at the possibility of a significant problem with our well-established standard model of cosmology. Furthermore, the simulation's results appear to be at odds with the observations made by instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories concerning the distribution of matter in the universe. While the existing theory elegantly describes the evolution of galaxies, a discrepancy arises. The theory predicts that galaxies should be clustered approximately 7% more tightly than what observations reveal. Even with the enhanced detail and inclusion of factors, like the influence of supermassive black holes in the new computer simulation, this discrepancy persists, albeit reduced to around 5%. This misalignment between theory and observation remains a puzzling challenge. This ongoing exploration and the discrepancies we're encountering are indeed exciting for science. They indicate that we're on the cusp of significant advancements and revisions to our cosmological model. This process of questioning and refining our understanding is precisely how science advances and evolves. It's an ever-evolving journey of discovery. What are your thoughts on the ongoing challenges to our cosmological model and the discrepancies between theory and observation? Do you believe this signals a major shift in our understanding of the universe? Feel free to express your thoughts and viewpoints. And be sure to join the Revel Discovery community by hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with Lunar Revelations and the forthcoming frontier of space exploration. Remember, as we venture into the universe, the sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. Keep looking up.